All right, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Computer security is indeed an issue of global concern. And I'd like to start today's presentation by asking all of you certain questions that will make you realize how dangerous or how less private the internet has made our lives. How many of you have got email accounts with Hotmail, Yahoo, Gmail, or AOL? Can I see hands, please? Stop using them. Hotmail, Yahoo, Gmail, and AOL put together probably has a few billion users across the globe. But did you know that each and every email being sent or received by all those billions of users is actually being scanned for certain keywords? In other words, if you were to send an email with the keywords, kill Obama, immediately you're blacklisted, a background check is done on you, and if any links between you and any terrorist organization is found, then obviously you're caught. How many of you used Google.com, the best search engine on the internet? Stop using it. <laughs> Google is actually known to keep a track of each and every user's searching habits on the internet. In other words, each time you connect to Google.com, whatever search terms you type onto Google.com, they're actually getting recorded in a permanent database and being stored along with your name, or at least along with something known as the IP address of your computer. How many of you use antivirus software? Stop using them. In the underground community, it's a widely accepted fact that the antivirus software companies are themselves creating viruses, releasing them on the, releasing them on the internet, infecting all your systems, and then selling you a countermeasure. One last question before I start with the presentation today. How many of you use the internet? <laughs> Stop using it. Because this kind of brings me back to what I said earlier. No matter what you do on the internet, every single move of yours is being recorded, is being logged on some server or the other. Now, obviously, it's not possible for any of us in this room to stop using the internet. That is where your understanding, your knowledge, your experience regarding the most common tools, techniques, and methods that are already known to the computer criminals really comes into the picture. There was a lady in Mumbai who lived in a typical Mumbai apartment, which is a one-room apartment. And that lady was really obsessed with the latest technological gadgets. So she used to buy herself a scanner, a web camera, a 3D surround sound system, the latest processor, broadband internet connection, and so on. And this lady also had this habit of chatting on the internet for several hours together every single evening. Now one evening, when the lady was chatting on the internet, the person with whom she was chatting managed to hack into the lady's computer. And after hacking into the lady's computer, the criminal managed to install a spying software called a Trojan on the lady's computer. And after installing the Trojan on the lady's computer, the criminal probably sitting in some other part of the world secretly, remotely managed to use that Trojan to switch the lady's web camera on. So from that moment, whatever happened in the lady's apartment, which I like to remind all of you was a one-room apartment in Mumbai, was actually being broadcasted live on the internet 24 hours a day. And the lady had absolutely no knowledge that something so terrible was happening to her. And I'm very sure that at this point of time, most of you in the audience are probably asking yourselves one big question. Is it really possible to use the internet to switch somebody else's web camera on? And I'm sure that many of you would love to be able to do that. However, uh, it just makes you realize that we live in a very dangerous world. Let me do this. How about this? How many of you have at some point of time wondered or wanted to spy upon your competitor? I'm sure a lot of people are interested. So in the next demonstration, we're going to see how easy it is for criminals to hack into your computer. So maybe how easy it is for your competitors to hack into your computer, or how easy it is for your employees to hack into your computer and control everything on your computer. Now, if you wanted to do this, or if a criminal wanted to do this, they would probably need to get something known as a Trojan. And when I talk about a Trojan, I'm not talking about something that you can buy in a gas station. I'm actually talking about a free software that you can download off the internet. Imagine that I'm a criminal, you're the victim. If I'm able to install a Trojan on your computer, then using that Trojan, I could be sitting in any part of the world, and I could remotely control all your software and all your hardware. And the best thing or the worst thing is, Trojans are available as a free download on the, on the internet. And some of the most popular and powerful Trojans on the internet are Netbus, Back Orifice, Sub7, Girlfriend, and Win Backdoor. 
So what I'm gonna do today is, I'm gonna quickly open up a Trojan on my computer. So I've actually pre-infected my laptop with a Trojan, so just so that all of you get a flavor of what exactly a Trojan looks like, and how easy it is for all of you to go back home today and start using a Trojan to control your competitor's computer. So I'm gonna use Netbus. And the way Netbus works is, in this space provided, you gotta type in something known as your competitor's IP address. Unfortunately, today we don't have the time to discuss how you can find out your competitor's IP address, but if you're interested, you can come up to me after the presentation, and I can tell you step-by-step -step instructions that you can need, to, need to follow to find out your competitor's IP address. So let's assume that you already have your competitor's IP address. You, you type it in the space provided, you click on connect, and in the status bar, it says connected to the victim's computer. So now that you've connected to the victim's computer, you can start using all these different buttons or options to remotely do things on the victim's computer. For example, there's an option known as the screen dump option. As soon as you click on the screen dump option, what happens is, sitting on your computer, you can see your competitor's computer screen. So all emails, documents, presentations, chat conversations, bank account information, anything that is getting displayed on your competitor's computer screen, you could see, in, or see it on your computer screen. There's another very interesting option known as the send text option. Imagine a scenario wherein the victim is typing an important email out which he's sending out to all his customers. And what if you as a criminal for some reason wanted to add your own sentences or text to that email? Once again, all you gotta do is type whatever comes to your mind in the space provided, click on OK, and as soon as you click on OK, whatever you just typed in this dialog box will actually become a part of the email or document or um, chat conversation that the victim was having at that given point of time. Next comes a very dangerous option. It's an option known as a listen option. What a listen option does is it starts recording all the keys that are being pressed on the victim's computer. So if your victim or if your competitor is logging into his email account, you can find out his username and password. If your competitor or victim is using his credit card online, you get the credit card information all remotely using this software. So I'm just gonna quickly simulate this. If I quickly, let's assume that I'm the victim, I'm logging into my AOL account. So I'm just gonna type in my username and I type in my password. And if I quickly open up the Trojan, if all of you look at the screen, the username and password has been recorded all remotely from anywhere on the internet. Right now I'm simulating this on a local machine, but in reality I could be sitting in Mumbai or in Moscow or in Japan and I could remotely spy upon what you're doing on your computer. There's also a file manager using which you can download files, upload files, delete files from the victim's machine all through the internet. Now, some of you in the audience are probably sitting right now and wondering, hey, by the way, I have an antivirus, I have the latest anti-spyware software, I'm probably protected. But in reality, that is not at all the case. There's actually something known as a fully undetectable Trojan, and fully undetectable Trojans cannot be detected by existing antivirus software at all. So you might be paying the monthly or annual subscriptions, but it's not actually giving you 100% security. Now, Trojans have been around for many years, but in the last few months or so, we have started seeing a lot of Trojans that, start, that affect cell phone platforms. So how many of you in the audience are using a BlackBerry device? Can I see hands, please? All right, if you're using a BlackBerry device, you might be interested to know that a few months ago, the world's first Trojan for the BlackBerry platform known as the ZS Trojan was released, and once your phone gets infected with the ZS Trojan, it is possible for a criminal to spy upon all your text messages, your emails, uh, intercept your phone calls, and of course steal any saved passwords from your BlackBerry phone. Not only that, how many of you are using an Android phone? All right, if you're using an Android phone, uh, earlier this year, there was something known as Droid Dreams that came out. Droid Dreams is basically a malicious uh, software that infected a lot of the Android applications. And if you download an uh, infected Android application onto your phone, then people can remotely access or spy on your activities on your Android phone. 
I'm gonna quickly move on to the next demonstration of the day, which is of another very interesting technique known as email spoofing. Email spoofing, like the name suggests, is basically the art of being able to send a fake or spoofed email that looks exactly like a real email from somebody else's email account without knowing the password. In other words, imagine a scenario wherein you have a disgruntled employee or you have a competitor who for some reason wants to send a spoofed email from your email account to all your customers investors, employees globally. And the email will look very real, very authentic. And the best part about email spoofing is absolutely anybody can perform email spoofing by simply starting the browser and connecting to the following website, which is anonymizer.in slash fake hyphen mailer. So let me quickly open up this website. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try and send a spoofed email from Bill Gates at Microsoft.com to a friend of mine at Stanford offering my friend a job with Bill Gates at Microsoft. <laughs> now, if I want to do this, all I need to do is quickly fill up this online form. So I type from Bill Gates at Microsoft.com, type the to address, type the subject of the email, and finally in this space provided, I got to type the actual body of the email. So I'm going to type something like, Dear Peter, heard a lot about you from my representatives in LA. Would you like to work as part of my personal technical advisory team. Of course, a seven-figure salary <laughs> will be offered to you. Call me on my cell phone. That's not the real number. Stop copying it down. <laughs> Thanks a ton. Warm regards, Bill. And ironically, a computer hacking website like this is using CAPTCHA so that spammers do not misuse this website. <laughs> it's just funny how this works. And once you copy these characters down, click on send, a few minutes later, when my friend Peter or checks his inbox, he would probably have received an email from Bill Gates at Microsoft.com offering him a job with Bill Gates at Microsoft. Best part is the email looks very real, very authentic, and the absolutely best part is when my friend replies to the email, the reply will obviously go back to Bill Gates at Microsoft.com. <laughs> now, email spoofing is great, but let's take it to the next level. There's actually something known as SMS spoofing as well. So imagine, imagine receiving a text message or an SMS from your spouse or from your kids or maybe from one of your partners. You'll probably trust it more as compared to an email that you have received from your spouse or, or from your partner. In fact, there's a website called spranked.com that allows you to send an SMS or text message from any other cell phone number and it costs probably less than $2 per message. So it's, it's not a lot of money, and at the same time, you can send a spoof message from absolutely any number of your choice. One last demonstration for the day. Uh, how many of you, when you travel, you use the internet access in hotel rooms? All right, how many of you are using the internet access at this venue right now? Excellent. So I'm going to show you a demonstration of a very interesting technique known as data sniffing. Imagine that you're staying in this hotel. I'm also staying in the same hotel. We are obviously staying in different rooms. But you access internet in your room, and you think that you're sitting in the privacy of your hotel room. But if I'm on the, in the same hotel, I'm actually on the same network as you are. And I could run a data sniffing software on my laptop in my room. And I can spy upon what activities you're performing on your laptop in your room. So I was actually running this software while the previous two speakers were speaking, and I actually managed to record all the websites that some of you in the audience were actually visiting in the last few, uh, in the last hour or so. So some of you logged on to twitter.com, then you have uh, a lot of Twitter, then what is my IP address.com, somebody access Google, Expedia, probably checking into one of your flights or rebooking your flight. So these are websites that I obviously did not open on my laptop. These are websites that some of you in the audience actually opened up. 
And I can actually uh, you know, analyze it a little bit further. So if, for example, if some of you logged into your email account or bank account, then some, if the password is not encrypted, it is possible for me to figure out what the password is. Or if I want to see which web page you actually opened up, I go click on one of these links and try to open up that web page on my machine. So if you're checking out somebody's Facebook profile, or if you're visiting a particular website, I can exactly see what that website was. And I don't even need to try and hack into your computer. As long as I'm on the same network as you, all your usernames, passwords, credit card numbers, emails, any kind of communication that you're doing on a public network, unless it's SSL encrypted, it is not at all secure. So I'm going to quickly switch over and give you simple solutions that all of you need to implement to improve your security. This is obviously a very, very brief overview on the various techniques that are used by criminals to hack into your computer. So two or three simple things that everybody must do to improve their security. First of all, you must install a firewall on your computer. Most people think that firewalls are only meant for, uh, meant for big organizations or big companies. But in reality, even on your home machine, you need to install a firewall, and I would recommend using Zone Alarm. It's free for home users, and it does a very good job. You must use an antivirus software on your, com on your computer. I think most of you are probably already using an antivirus software. But what's more important is you've got to update it on a weekly basis. I would also recommend using an anti-spyware software along with your antivirus software. Most people only use an antivirus software, but you probably need both running on your computer simultaneously. And the most important solution or countermeasure that I would like to recommend to all of you is to actually attend my workshop tomorrow morning, where I'm going to give you a bunch of live hacking demonstrations uh, which show you how easy it is for criminals to hack into your cell phones, into your email accounts, crack absolutely any kind of password, how to, how to hack into ATM machines, how to hack into digital road signs, and of course, how you can protect yourself and your organization against all these cybersecurity threats. So on that note, thanks a lot, everybody. I hope all of you enjoyed the presentation.